Hi friends, Calamity that's appreciative of reaching over 100 subs here. And today we're going to be talking about Dillo, who was just released on her banner as of right now. And I'm in the character trial to test her out. Uh, we're going to go over her, all of her talents and her abilities and artifacts and weapons and whatnot and see if she is worth pulling. So let's start with the talents. All right. We have uh, Normal Attack Dance of the Sams. Sam, sir? Uh, seems pretty normal. Uh, charge attack consumes a certain amount of stamina to perform a twirling slash. And plunging attack seems pretty much the same there. The multipliers seem uh, normal. All right, let's look at her elemental skill. Dance of the half car... Oh, God. I'm going to mess this up. Dance of the half car svar. I I'm sure I said that correctly. Enters the pirouette state dealing hydro damage to nearby opponents based on her max hp while she is in the pirouette state nilo's normal attacks and elemental skill will cause her to enter the sword dance sword dance and whirling step stances respectively okay causing damage she deals to be converted into hydro damage that cannot be overridden and that is considered elemental skill damage okay good to know oh boy this is a lot to read okay in these in, in these stances nilo's Third dance step will end the pirouette and has the following effects based on the type of said dance step. Uh, sword dance unleashes a luminous illusion that deals hydro damage to opponents it touches and grants Nilo the lunar prayer effect. This effect converts Nilo's normal attacks into sword dance techniques and her final hit will unleash a luminous illusion. Whirling steps Nilo un unleashes a whirling water wheel that deals AoE hydro damage and creates a tranquility aura. Uh, that follows your active character around and applies wet to opponents within the, its AoE. I'm just hoping this is like way more complicated than it looks with the whole stances and stuff. And it's easier to just distinguish what stance you're in and how to do the different finishers here. Uh, Nilo is unable to perform charge attacks while under the effect of the pirouette or the lunar prayer. These effects will be removed when she leaves the field. That was quite the read. Uh, let's look at the burst. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, skill attributes. So the damage is 5.34% of her max HP. So another HP scaling uh, Hyjo character here. It looks like the sword dance is the way to go here. Over the luminous illusion. Since it, it does multiple hits. Uh, I'm not sure though. Pirouette duration is 10 seconds. Lunar prayer duration is 8. Tranquility aura is 12. It has a cooldown of 18 seconds. That is pretty hefty. Let's take a look at the burst. Begins the dance of faraway dreams and springs that here, uh, causing a lotus of distant waters to bloom, dealing AoE hydro damage based on Nello's max HP again, and applying the lingering Aeon effect to all opponents hit. After an interval, uh, opponents affected by the lingering Aeon will take hydro damage. Okay, that one seems pretty straightforward compared to the skill. So it does a pretty big amount here 30 per almost 30 percent of nilo's max hp that can be pretty nasty uh as well as the lingering aeon damage here another big uh multiplier with the max hp 36 percent of getting like 40k hp is nothing to scoff at that's pretty good uh also 18 second cooldown energy costs 70 so at least it's not 80 that's uh pretty nice there and now we have her passive talents Oh, goodness me. <laughs> Nilo's... Oh, my goodness. Nilo's quite the character to read a lot about. Okay. When all characters in the party are all Dendro or Hydro, there are at least one Dendro character... And there are at least one Dendro character and one Hydro character. The completion of the third dance step of Nilo's dance of, the, of her skill uh, will grant all nearby characters the Golden Chalice's bounty for 30 seconds. Characters under the effect of the Golden Chalice's bounty will increase their elemental mastery by 100 for 10 seconds whenever they are hit by uh, Dendro attacks. Also triggering the Bluma reaction will create bountiful cores instead of Dendro cores. Such cores will burst very quickly after being created and they have larger AoEs. Bountiful cores cannot trigger the usual Hyper Bloom and Burgeon uh, reactions and they share an upper numerical limit. Dendro cores. Bountiful core damage is considered damage dealt by Dendro cores produced by Bloom. 
Okay, that was uh, that's a, that's a lot. Should the party not meet the conditions for this passive talent, any existing Golden Chalice's bounty effects will be canceled. So this is the important thing you need to know about Nilo if you are deciding to pull for her. You need to have a team of only Dendro and Hydro characters. That means necessarily mean that you can't do like a, maybe a potential freeze comp or electro charge or some sort of vaporize with her. I'm sure you still can, but not doing so, you're missing out a huge part of her kit here with these bountiful cores. These seem really, really good, and we'll give them a shot in the combat uh, coming up in a sec here. But this is something you need to know, and that's probably why they were giving out Kokomi in the last banner. And now Nilo here, and now we're going to get Nahida in the next banner. So the fourth one is up to you. You could either build your free Kali that we've gotten, or Traveler Dendro if you want. Uh, that could also work. So that that seems to be the team that Hoyoverse wants you to run with her. It seems very niche, which is, uh, you know. All right, let's move on to the next talent, which is Dreamy Dance of Aeons. Every 1,000 points of Nilo's max HP above 30,000 will cause the damage dealt by the Bountiful Cores created by the character effect affected by the Golden Chalice's Bounty to increase by 9%. The maximum increase in bountiful core damage that can be achieved this way is 400%. Okay, so this is just solidifying the fact that you just want to run her with Dendro and Hydro characters only since if you don't, you basically lose uh, these two passive talents. Can the music relax for a second? Okay, so you, it, again, 30,000 HP is not hard to achieve. Uh, you can easily get 40 or even 50,000 HP depending on her ascension stat and the weapon you choose to, to use on her and all that kind of stuff. So already just having 40,000 HP is going to result in 90% increased damage for those bountiful cores. And the passive talent is a cooking one, which, uh, you know, chance to double your thing. It, I don't even know why we still get cooking talents, to be honest. There's so many characters that have a cooking talent. But yeah, that seems to be her talents. Let's look at her weapon, which is going to be key of the, oh geez. Key of the Kaj Nizut. I hope I pronounced that somewhat correctly. It has a substat of HP percentage, quite a lot, even at level 80. And we have a long-ish effect here. Let's give it a read. So Sunken Song of the Sands, HP will be increased by 20% straight up. When an elemental skill hits opponents, you gain the Grand Hymn effect for 20 seconds. This effect will increase the equipping character's elemental mastery by 0.12% of their max HP. That's quite a lot of elemental mastery. Uh, this effect can be triggered once every 0.3 seconds with a maximum of 3 stacks. That's quite a bit. When this effect gains 3 stacks, or when the third stack's duration is refresh refreshed, excuse me, uh, the elemental mastery of all nearby party members will be increased by 0.2% of the equipping character's max HP for 20 seconds. Holy moly, elemental mastery for everybody. Jesus. So yeah, not only is this going to mean more damage for your Nilo, this is going to mean more damage for your team overall because elemental mastery. Pretty nice. That's a pretty nice weapon. Artifacts. They gave her two-piece Tenacity of the Mill Millilith and two-piece Gilded Dreams, which... I definitely see why. Uh, kind of interesting she doesn't have a four-piece effect that would be good for her. Um, maybe Heart of Depth. Maybe a four-piece Gilded Dreams. But with the team comps you're running with her, you're not going to get that much EM out of it. So, hmm. And the 20% increase HP from Tenacity is pretty good. All right, we're not going to look at the constellations just yet. We're going to do a test run on the combat for her and give her a shot. Finally, right? So here's the normal attacks. This is just... There's her combo. Easy one, two, three. Here's the charge. Alright, pretty straightforward. Now let's actually try her out in some combat. Whoa. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing with the skill there. Oh, I see. So when you swap... Okay. I see, I see.
Where are those uh, bountiful cores at? Wait, that's it? What? I didn't even get to really see what was happening. I didn't understand what just happened. Uh, let's try again. So, skill? There we go. Man, those long cooldowns are kind of oof. Oh, I kind of see them. Sorry, I'm not really talking much. I'm just trying to see the, the damage. Ouch. It's so hard to see what was doing what because there's just so many numbers, especially when you toss out, you know, Kali's all and then you toss out her all and then plus the sword moves. She has really cool attacks. I like the waves when she's doing her slashes during the, the different dances, but I didn't understand what the heck I was doing. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm still confused. Maybe someone else can explain this to me later, but for now, let's take a look at the constellations. All right, Dance of the Waning Moon. So her skill will be enhanced as follows. The luminous illusion damage is going to be increased by 65%. Whoa. The tranquility's aura duration is extended by six seconds. That's pretty nice. What the heck? Since she has such a long cooldown, a C1 Nilo is going to help make it feel not as bad if with the longer lasting uh, aura effect here. C2. After characters affected by the Golden Chalice's bounty deal hydro damage to an opponent, that opponent's hydro res will be decreased by 35%. Whoa, for 10 seconds. After a triggered bloom reaction deals damage to opponents, also reduced by 35%. Holy moly, this is going to be 70% increased damage because if you're doing the Golden Chalice stuff, you're doing your blooms and that's going to be both Hydro and Dendro damage. So both of these effects are going to proc. You're going to see some big numbers. And then C3 and C5 are always just plus uh, 3 to burst and skill respectively on this one it seems. Yep. Alright, C4. After the third dance step of her elemental skill, pirouette, uh, pirouette hits opponents. Nilo will gain 15 elemental energy and damage from her uh, burst. Oh, sorry. I, I misread that. Okay. Damage from her burst will be increased by 50% for 8 seconds. There's just so many different dances. It gets confusing. Um, so I, I feel like Hoyoverse has like felt like the C4 for a lot of the 5 stars lately is always some sort of energy thing to her and this one is both an energy recharge uh constellation for her and an increase in damage it's like two and one uh geez nilo c6 is looking to be pretty broken at this point point. and lastly we have a frost uh breakers melody oh boy <laughs> for every 1000 points of max hp Nilo's crit rate and crit damage will increase by 0.6 and 1.2 respectively. The maximum increase in crit rate and crit damage via this method is 30 and 60% respectively. I can't math right now, but you should be able to get 40,000 to 50,000 HP on a Nilo easily. So I don't know how much you need to get these maxed out. But it seems like you're going to get a decent amount of crit rate and crit damage on top of already like on your artifacts. Getting it from your artifacts. So you're going to have like insane crit rate and crit damage for her. Uh, holy moly, this character is going to do a lot of damage, especially if you decide to whale for her. Straight up. I just kind of wish I understood her playstyle and kit a little bit more. It just seems a little confusing. But maybe I just need to play with her more and I'll understand it. Seriously, all of her constellations are just... More damage, more damage, more damage, more damage, more damage, more damage. Seriously, all all six of them. It's crazy. Okay, so I just did another combat run with her, but I'm pretty sure I edited it out. And I still don't know what I'm doing with this character, to be honest. She's just so 
Like, all of the stuff on paper, it just sounds like so much damage, but when you actually play her... Like, yeah, there's a lot of damage numbers and stuff are dying, but keep in mind we're just fighting Hillichurls here, so I don't know how well she's gonna be in, like, you know, Spiral Abyss or some boss fights on when it comes to single target. So I'm a little confused on that, but I'm just seeing lots of damage numbers and I'm just pressing buttons and stuff is dying, so... I guess that makes her an okay character. Uh, for me personally, I'm probably gonna skip her. Uh, not because I think she's a terrible character or anything like that. I just have all of the four stars on her banner at C6. And as a free to play player, you know, I'm not here to just farm star glitter. And I'm really far away from a guarantee or a 50 50 or anything like that. So, uh, not only that, but Nahida is also coming up in the next banner. And I definitely want to pull for her instead. And hopefully, she has some four stars that uh, have constellations that I need still. So. I think she'll be an interesting character to, to pull for in the future for me personally, but if you guys decide to pull for her, let me know what you guys think about her. She seems like an interesting character, although very limited when it comes to team comps, especially now because Dendro is still somewhat new. And again, we don't have a lot of Dendro uh, characters in the game quite yet. With that being said, I just want to say thank you to everybody that subscribed to the channel in the past like 48 hours. I went way over 100 subs and it keeps going and i'm not complaining at all i appreciate that you guys are enjoying the videos that i put out and i will continue to do so uh just like this one and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks again for watching